Welcome back to the program. This is Capital Market Live on Channels Television. This is where we let you into our diaries and let's show you some of the events to expect next week in the capital market space here in Nigeria. First, uh, so the visit of the chairman and chief executive officer of the Investment and Securities Tribunal, Mr. Shiaka Isaiah Idokwako, who we once uh, had on the show here. He will be visiting the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange on Monday, uh, the 7th of May, uh, alongside the management of that tribunal. Uh, they will also close the markets and hopefully give us an update on how much has been achieved around uh, financial crimes and some of the pending cases that we have with the IST since the body uh, or, the, or the team took over uh, sometimes last year. And Sterling Bank will also be holding its facts behind the figure session on Tuesday, the 8th of May at the same Nigerian Stock Exchange. It is expected that uh, the stakeholders in the market will be in attendance to hear from Sterling Bank, while on the following day, Jai's Bank, which will, be, uh, will also come in to present its own facts behind the figures uh, session. That The following day now is Wednesday 9th of uh, May this year. The board and executive management of that bank, which is uh, mainly an, a non-interest uh, financial institution will visit the exchange for facts behind the figures and the presentation will hold on the 20th floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry was at the NSE this week to dialogue with the management of the exchange. They had the opportunity of closing the stock markets on Monday and after that, the, after the president addressed uh, brokers and dealers on the floor, we had the privilege of chatting with the president, Mr. Babatunde Rawashi. He also referenced uh, the fact that the non-passage of the 2018 budget is having a negative impact on businesses, even though members of the chamber will like to get list on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Let's listen to him. Yeah, we have come to pay the U.S. courtesy call to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, it is traditional that when a president assumes office, he comes to the Nigerian Stock Exchange because we are there where the capital is. Uh, just to tell them that we are together, we collaborate with the Stock Exchange actually, and to also reassure that the administration that is coming in also will continue with the tradition. Beyond what we are doing, we have been doing in the past, we want to see the inclusion of small and medium-sized companies more participating in the stock market. Because evidently, it is clear that it's only the stock market that you could raise capital at a very affordable rate. Uh, we also would want to look at areas where some government uh, infrastructure could be financed on the market. That's the PPP arrangement. So these are things that we are going to be looking at in the years to come. Unfortunately, we are a not-for-profit organization. So there will be nothing to actually present to the markets. I'm sure if we were to bring in our financials here, it will not be qualified for listing. But we would work on our members who are actually business people to come into the market. Those shortcomings, those things that are actually inhibiting a small-time businessman from getting to the market. Those are things that will allay those fears. Issue of governance, record keeping, and having confidence in the market. These are things that we will do. We as Lagos Chamber of Commerce cannot be listed on the market. We are not for profit, but we will see what we can do to encourage members to uh, embrace the market and come into the market. Usually they say the country is, has potential, is a potentially great country. But unfortunately, the way we run government is what is holding us back. You would see that there is no budget. We don't have a budget now. And when there is no budget, businessmen are not planned. It's the only thing, Stephen Grace, that has been making us to perform as business people is we have been used to this tradition of not having budget come quickly. There's some other economies where people, people look at the budgets to know how to plan your year as a company because by the time the draft comes into the assembly, you can see the direction the government is going and you can take position. So 
we will just continue to hope that we do it rightly. We have agreed as people, uh, business people, that unless we get it right politically, we cannot make progress. And this we are trying to also work on. The president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Obatunde Ruwashi Dier. Now let's continue with our review of the earnings that came into the market this week and a bit of other news that we can remind you of before we end the program. Uh, USCN's earnings was one of the major uh, numbers that trickled into the market this week as well. USCN saw a 25% uh, year-on-year decline and a 10% quarter-on-quarter slide in revenue to 18.3 billion naira in the first quarter of this year. And that's about the lowest quarterly revenue in eight quarters of the company's financial calendar. Now, the performance was driven by a sustained weakness in animal feed segments, which fell uh, by 40% year-on-year, as well as the real estate units, which shared 62% year on year. We're seeing a whole lot of uh, high uh, vacancy rates in a lot of these apartments that have been built, um, some by this company, some by some other real estate uh, companies in the market. But both subdivisions of the company were impacted by intense competitive pressure and unfavorable demand conditions. The gross margin in the quarter under review came in at 19.5%. And before we go, let's remind you of some of the latest developments in the markets. Uh, Guinness, Nigeria PLC, the NSA-listed brewer, announced a directorate change in its board as the chief executive, Mr. Peter Undegwa, stepped down to take up a new role within Diageo PLC, the parent company. Now, in a statement to the Nigerian Stock Exchange this week, the brewer notes that his counterpart, Mr. Beka Magunda, who manages Meta Abo Brewery in Ethiopia, will take over as the new CEO of Guinness Nigeria. And that's in the due course. Mr. Ndegwa has been at Guinness Nigeria for about three years, transforming the company uh, with a successful rights issue and the implementation of other productivity programs, evident in the third quarter financial performance of the company, which we also uh, reviewed uh, some time ago on the program. And here's a breaking news, just trickling in now. The All Progressives Congress has postponed the Ekita State's governorship primary. This comes after thugs invaded the venue of the election in Ado Ekiti, the state capital, and broke the ballot boxes. No date has been announced for a repeat of the primaries. On that note, we'll draw the curtain on the program this evening. Thank you for being a part of it. We do hope to see you next time on Temple Ashaji. Bye for now.